All right, I'm gonna do a review of the Yunsing Pharos 2 F261 takedown recurve. Um, basically, my review is going to be, uh, you know, not an expert review because I'm just a beginner archer. Uh, I recently moved uh, to an area that uh, has a a regional park and I discovered that the park has an archery range and signed up for some beginner lessons there and uh, kind of got myself hooked. So originally I started it out with uh, these PSC snake recurves because at the time I did not know whether I wanted to shoot uh, you know left-handed or right-handed or anything like that um but i've been shooting this bow for a little while now had um had a lot of fun with it still have a lot of fun with it um but i was ready to move on and i didn't really know what kind of bow that i should be um moving towards um, at the archery range, there's a lot of Olympic recurve shooters out there and um, and a lot of hunters. And uh, I wanted to keep things simple, kind of uh, take me back to my childhood when I used to make bows out of uh, you know, small saplings and, uh, I, you know, just shooting really primitive style because, uh, you know, I didn't have any instruction whatsoever. Um... But I had a lot of fun. Um, I used to wander around the woods, you know, around my house and um, just shot at uh, tree stumps or anything, really. Um, <clears throat> then later on uh, at school, we got introduced to some archery using some cheap fiberglass bows. And, you know, that taught me some basic rudimentary uh, techniques. But archery was pretty much uh, forgotten for probably 30 years or so until uh, I discovered this archery range. So I did not want a compound bow. Um, recurves definitely appeal to, uh, appeal to me. Um, I basically grew up, you know, watching archery and movies from Robin Hood to Cowboys and Indians and to me that was in my mindset you know what a bow was like I was never really turned on to uh, you know advanced compound bows or anything like that it just seems too complicated I wanted something that was simple but at the same time I wanted something that was compact and small so that I could just throw everything into a backpack, um, hop on my bike, and ride on over to the park uh, to get some shooting in. So, combing around YouTube and trying to figure out my price range, um, that's when I that's when I came across this Yunsing F two sixty one, and. From all the videos that I seen on it, I thought it was very, very attractive. Um, being, you know, so new to archery and not really keeping up with all the modern trends in archery, uh, I, I really had difficulty trying to decide on what I wanted. Uh, I certainly didn't have the budget for um, Hoyts or anything fancy like that. Um, I, I'm not a hunter, although I'm not opposed to it. Uh, I'm, I just don't have access to anybody to show me the ropes of hunting, but I seem to like the profile of hunting recurves a heck of a lot better than Olympic recurves. And what appealed to me about this is that it kind of, it's a, it's a cross between an Olympic recurve with the 21 inch riser and uh and hunting risers which are generally a lot smaller like 
I think they start around 15 to 17 inches. Most of the ones that I came across were 17 inches. And I wanted something that I could still do, you know, some decent target shooting. Uh, but uh, I do a lot of camping and hiking and things like that. So I wouldn't mind something that was just at, as home as at home in the woods uh, as at the archery range. So, again, looking at this, this is, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good looking riser in my opinion. Um, it fits really good in the hand. Now, when I opened it from the box, and it was really well packed, it came with tons of accessories. But if you can see the, the cutouts here, the, um, this is foam. And the riser was pretty much covered in a lot of this foam dust. So I had to wipe that down really well. Um, I noticed too that uh, like the handle here, some of the edges like felt a little bit, you know, still rough sanded in my hand. So I did take some really nice uh, 1200 grit um, sandpaper and even roughed out some of the grit on that to make it even smoother and just kind of polished up some of the edges a little bit so now it feels a lot nicer and smoother in my hand. Um, I also went ahead and uh, took advantage of this fur rest and put it on uh, this uh, uh, this shelf uh, I don't know what you even call this thing, but uh, this came already attached with the bow as an option so that you could shoot off the rest. I kind of, uh, it was already on there. I like the simplicity of it, so I just decided I wanted to learn to shoot off the rest. Um, the limbs. I got 35 pound limbs, um, being that this is an ILF bow, and that was another consideration that I, that was important to me was that, um, you know, I originally looked at Samick Sages and, and those type of, uh, those types of bows, but they kind of have you locked into their limb system. And um, so I kind of wanted uh, something where I could chase, uh, you know, some versatility on uh, the types of limbs I wanted to try. So these, these are the limbs that came with this particular model. Uh, it has some, uh, feels like velvet or something like that, sticky tape that I went ahead and put on. Um, a lot of the accessories that it came with now, it did not come with a plunger. I went out and bought this plunger just recently. Haven't decided to try it yet. Um, but it came with a uh, plastic arrow rest and a flipper style rest. Um, but <clears throat> after uh, seeing a review that said that you can't shoot a flipper style rest unless you have a plunger, uh, I decided not to really give that a go yet. Um, so it came with a string, but it did not come with a bow stringer. I had to go out and get myself a bow stringer. Um, so I think I'm going to pause the video and string it up right now. Let you see what it looks like strung up. Well, I decided that I would film the stringing process so that you can see how to attach the limbs. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is find out what's the upper and the lower. Um, so they go in, this, this spot right here goes in just like this. And it locks in nicely. Bottom limb. Just like that. Now you want to make sure that the 
curved tips are facing outwards. Um, now, you will hear a little bit of rattle like that, but the limbs aren't going anywhere. And once uh, you string up the bow and put tension on it, you won't get any rattle whatsoever. Uh, one thing to note is that there's a bunch of little um, drill holes here so that you can attach a bunch of accessories. I think you can attach a quiver, you can attach um, stabilizers, you can attach uh, sights. Um, there are holes here for loosening and tightening the uh, limb bolts, which will help you to adjust the limb tiller and um, and also it helps you to dial up or dial down the uh, draw weight of the bow. Um, these side screws here allow you to adjust uh, the limb alignment to make sure that your bowstring is sitting straight. And uh, let me go ahead and string it up. Now, another thing too is the bow came with some, I, I believe this is uh, otter fur. Um, <clears throat> the string itself, I don't know anything about strings, uh, but it feels pretty good to me. Um, so I don't know what kind of string this is called. It's probably Dacron or something like that. Uh, it's black and gray, two strands, uh, or two different color strands. And it came with these string silencers, and I was deciding whether or not whether I wanted to use them. I did some shooting tests uh, with them on and with them off. Um, it wasn't so bad with them off. There was definitely a twang that I, I could feel reverberating, and just uh, I just kind of wanted to see what it was like with these. At first, you know... I didn't want to put them on because I want to keep my bow as bare as possible. You know, like I said, I don't want to get into all the crazy gadgets that come with, uh, you know, all these bows. And I, I think, uh, <laughs> I think that if archery becomes like golf, I don't think I would be as interested in it. I like to keep things very simple. Um, actually, I would like to get more into, um, Asiatic horse bows uh, because I don't think it gets any simpler than that really um, not even shelves I mean they're shooting off of their hands and I would that's the way I would like to go also I had tried out brass knocks on my previous bow and I didn't like the way that it felt to my fingers so I decided to get some uh, red server thread and make these knocking points myself. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and string up the bow. And I would definitely recommend using a stringer so that uh, you don't go damaging these limbs here since you know they're just kind of you know even though they're attached well with that kind of play in it I wouldn't uh, I would not try to uh, put on the bowstring by using you know bending it between your legs or anything like that who knows what could happen there and um with the money you pay for these bows even though i got a great deal on this one i would not want to go messing anything up all right make sure i'm gonna make sure that uh the string is in alignment now <clears throat> 